Oh, sorry. I just twisted my ankle and maybe can someone bring ice? Ice is very important, you know? That's what is everybody doing in the whole world. Someone falls down and the reaction is directly, oh, can someone bring ice? So it must be right. If the whole world is doing this, we should also do it. <laughs> I broke the machine. This bottle. Wow. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the best with all these technical things. Yeah, just a little bit about my person. Um, I'm a doctor of physical therapy and did my master in sports physiotherapy and rehabilitation. And I work as a lecturer, researcher, and most of my life I worked in professional football, in Bundesliga and for the Thai national team. So I've seen thousands of soft tissue injuries, kicks, twisted ankles, muscle ruptures. And the question is always, what can we do to bring the people back as fast as possible? We call this rehabilitation. And rehabilitation means to support the natural healing process. We heard already a lot about that the body is your best doctor. So actually the body knows how to react to an injury and what to do to heal it. So we should support this and not work against it. That's a very important message. We have to create an environment to support the healing process, we have to treat the problem and not just the symptoms. And it should be individual and customized. Inflammation. I'm talking here about an acute inflammation. And inflammation has five signs already written by Galen at around 150 after Christ. So we know this already a long time. It's always heat, redness, swelling, pain, and loss of function. This is a normal reaction of the body, and it's part of the healing process. There is no healing without inflammation, but there is inflammation without healing. We heard this many times that people have pain, they have inflammation, and after a while people say, oh, now you have a chronic inflammation. Most of the time people say, oh, we have to stop the inflammation. But like I said, the inflammation is a normal part of the healing process. Dr. Gabe Merkin wrote already in 78, the RISE method for injuries. I think most people heard about it. It's rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Until now, most people follow this, especially the ice. That's when it really started with, oh, we need ice, apply ice. But the question is, is this really the right way to do it? 25,000 sprained ankles a day. And if you look at the research, around 30% of these people have, after the use of rest and ice, still pain after one year. So it seems to be that rest and ice is not the right treatment. More and more doctors, therapists say, oh, we have to start moving as soon as possible. But still they are using ice. Ice, people use it for injuries, for pain, and after surgeries, and sometimes for weeks. They are 
hospitals, rehabilitation hospitals, where they put everyday eyes on the injured area. And if I speak to therapists, they make physiotherapy, they make exercises, and directly after, they put ice. And I say, why you do this? Yeah, that it's not getting big after and that it will not hurt after. So first they want to move. And when I move, I increase the metabol metabolism. I have more blood flow. And they, after, they put ice again to bring everything down. Actually, it doesn't make sense. The physiological effects of ice, it decreases the inflammation. So it puts the inflammation down. I mentioned already, we need the inflammation to have a healing. Because of the inflammation, the body can start the healing process. If I have an injury, there is a lot of damaged cells, waste products, blood, and the body has to remove it. That's the first step. And then later, the body has to rebuild the structure again. All this cannot happen without the inflammation and with a good metabolism. But when I put ice, my blood flow goes down. So I always explain it like this. If we have a house and the earthquake comes, everything is damaged and there's a lot of waste. If you now want to rebuild the house, what do you have to do first? You have to remove everything what is damaged. For that, you need macrophages. And these cells will help to remove it, and we need the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is our cleaning system in the body. If we put ice, the macrophages will not go there. The lymphatic system cannot remove everything, so I don't have this cleaning process. The next step is to build everything up again. The blood vessels have to bring new material, proteins mostly, to build again the muscle or the structure which is damaged. So it starts with collagen type 3 and then the body will change it to type 1 or 2. This all depends on a very good metabolism, on a blood flow. If I put ice, I stop this healing process. Vasoconstriction, so the blood vessels go down, they close. We have a decrease of histamine reaction. It produces swelling. Oh, produce swelling. I thought ice will reduce swelling. Everybody tell me if I have swelling, put ice. Because everybody tells me the ice will reduce the swelling. No, it's not true. Ice will produce swelling. I will sh show later some more research about this. It will decrease the immune system, but actually we need an immune system, a good immune system, to become healthy again for the repair process. It will decrease the pain. This is very good. Yeah? Of course, when I put ice, I don't feel the pain anymore, so people treat the symptom. But actually, it's negative for the healing process. And the pain is also a warning signal. So if I put ice and I don't feel the pain anymore, I will maybe use it too much and then make more damage than I had even before. It reduces tissue tension and muscle spasm. There is some research about ice and swelling. And on injured people, already Lewis in 39, and then you can see all these research papers show exactly that ice is not reducing the swelling. 
So there is more than enough evidence for this. Van Wingarden, or Weingarden, he's a professor from Belgium, and he was the first one who woke me up and said, Andy, don't use ice anymore. So I'm still thankful about this. Even on healthy people, they made research, and also there, they had the same effect. There's no positive effect and no reduction of swelling. Moisten showed that there are negative effects on the lymphatic system after applying ice. And I said already before, the lymphatic system is our cleaning system. Yeah? When someone gets injured, we see the hematoma, and sometimes we don't see it on the first day, only swelling. On the second day, we see that it's getting blue. Because the blood from deep inside comes from the lymphatic system on the outside, superficial, and then it will be removed. Dr. Ursula just had this experience. She had an injury on her knee. She came to see me. There was big swelling. We made lymphatic drainage. The next day, she came again, and we could see it was blue, but the swelling was reduced. And she didn't put ice. She... So this and the damage of the small vessels of the lymphatic system is one reason for the swelling when I use ice. The application of ice also can destroy the tissue and the body reaction and can create inflammation, which makes the edema. Yeah? Especially with ice spray, what we see very often in sports. Takachi made a very nice research in 2010. So he put directly after the injury 20 minutes ice and had a control group. Of course, he had to do this on, muscle, on the muscle of rats. Difficult to do such a research on humans. And he checked the selectivity, growth factor, and macrophages. This is the no ice group, ice group. And if we see here, we have a lot of macrophages. Here we have less macrophages. So this is responsible for cleaning up. After three days, we see regenerating muscle cells present. And here we have a reduced muscle cell number. After four days, we have normal-sized muscle cell product, uh, produced. Here, it's smaller. After 14 days, we have a normal maturation of the regenerating muscle fibers. And here, it was reduced. And the cross-sectional area of the regenerating muscle was 65% greater than the icing group. And, very important, the collagen fibers were seen only among the bundles of muscle fibers, like in healthy muscles. But if we look at the ice group, there was abnormal collagen formation. And this shows that the healing factor is very bad. The new tissue, the quality, is not like it should be. And then we get chronic problems. Then we get re-injuries. And we get a prolonged healing process. These findings suggest that icing applied soon after injury not consider considerably <laughs> retarded muscle regeneration, but also induced impairment of muscle regeneration along with excessive collagen deposition. So we have a slower rehabilitation and the quality is not as good. That's not what we want. And if you just think about the physiology, it's clear what is happening if we don't have a good metabolism. Takeuchi, made in 2013, 
actually the same research, but with heat. And the regeneration of the muscles was better and the collagen deposition was also much better, so the quality of the new muscle was better. And the selectivity. So we need to increase the metabolism. If we look at the latest research, this is just from the last years, Sakamoto just published a systematic review where he showed that all the research and here also Kawashima with ice and heat in 21, they all come to the same result. Ice delays the start of the healing, lengthen the recovery process, has a bad tissue quality and impairs muscle regeneration. Heat supports the healing process, increase the metabolism, better tissue quality, facilitate the regenerative process. Many people say, I don't like ice. I love ice, if I can eat it. If we just look at the research, everything is clear. In the beginning, when I tried it in professional football, the coaches, the players were, no, you cannot put ice, uh, heat. <laughs> you have to put ice. And I was, no, trust me, let's do it. The next day they come and they say, Andy, I feel much better. We had a player who had a, needed a knee surgery and I spoke with the doctor who did the surgery and I asked him, can you please not put ice after the surgery? And he said, we do this always. We do the surgery directly ice. And I said, please don't do it. Let me know when the surgery is finished and I come one hour later and I start manual lymphatic drainage to activate the lymphatic system. And he asked why. I explained to him and he said, okay, let's try it. So I did the lymphatic drainage, no ice. The next morning, I did again lymphatic drainage. We put heat on the knee. A few hours later, the doctor came to check and he said, okay, let's open the bandage. And he opened it and he said to me, Andy, there's nearly no swelling. Why? We didn't put ice. And then he said to the bear, oh, can you bend? And he bent. I said, wow. At the end, it was the same like always. He said, wow, that would be good if we change our procedure. He talked to other doctors and they said, no, we always use ice, we continue like this. And this is everywhere. It's the same in Germany, in Thailand. I was invited to Qatar, to the Espetar Rehabilitation Center, the best rehabilitation center in the world. And I spoke to a group of doctors from all the Champions League teams in football. And we asked them, are you still using ice? And they said, yes. And I asked, why? <sighs> yeah, the president, the players, the coach, everybody wants it. And I said, yeah, but you are the doctor, you are the therapist, you must decide what is the best treatment. And this is a big conflict we have many, many times, yeah? So we all worked here in professional football and many times we, we are forced to do things which we don't want to do. And when I talk about this, especially the young therapists come to me and say, I understand it, I want to do it, but they don't let me do it. Change always needs time. And in March 2014, Dr. Gabe Mer Merkin, the guy who started the RISE protocol. Coaches have used my RISE guideline for decades, but now it appears that both ice and complete rest may delay healing instead of helping. If he can change, everybody can change. And if we just think about the physiology, I think it's very, very clear what our body needs and we must support the healing process of our body. Thank you so much. And I don't know if we have time for questions, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Sorry? Yeah,
Um, I don't think so. We've got to probably move on. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to. Around, so please, if you have any questions, come to me. I will try to answer. Do you have one? We have time. You directly raised your hand. Do you have a question? Uh, so I'm just curious. All the uh, cold plunge pools and ice baths that we put into our wellness centres, yeah. are they a waste of time? <laughs> yeah. Like we, what, what I like to say is always it depends. Yeah, when I worked in professional football in Germany, we had a big pool for recovery and it was hot, 38 degree. And then later it came, especially from American football, that they started using ice. They started it because they had contusions over their whole body and they had pain. So they went inside to reduce the pain. But for the healing, it's not good especially if we go too long. If I would go inside maybe for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, I would have the effect of reducing the pain. But if I go out after 10, 15 seconds, I have this reactive hypermia, so the blood vessels close and directly open again, so it would not be negative for the healing process. But if we look at the research, there's no evidence that this long ice baths for two, three minutes is positive for healing or for recovery. Yeah? Okay, I get the sign. Sorry, we have to stop, but yeah, if you have any questions, please come. Thank you.